TV. We are here today with Dr. Michael Wald, Doctor of Nutrition and Director of Nutritional Services at Integrated Medicine of Mount Kisco, PC. Our topic is skin, hair, nails, and teeth. What diseases are associated with skin, hair, nails, or teeth issues? Well, that's a really loaded question because skin, hair, and nails are tissues that we see on the outside of the body that often reflect problems almost anywhere else in the body. So when a person has issues with either of those tissues, skin, hair, nails, or teeth, the first thing I would think about is just overall nutrition or nutritional improvements. A person might be protein deficient, they might be minerally deficient. So for example, a person that doesn't eat enough protein would probably have dry skin, they probably would lose hair, and they would certainly uh, predispose to uh, brittle uh, nails and perhaps loss in the density of their teeth and might be uh, predisposed to cavities. A person who is zinc deficient certainly could have brittle nails with ridges on them and little white spots. A person who is iron anemic might have nails that are spooned in. Uh, a person that is biotin deficient or fatty acid deficient. Fatty acids are found in healthy fats in the diet, like avocados and nuts and seeds and fish. They might have, again, dry skin, loss of elasticity of skin. Uh, they might lose hair, or again, loss of the overall glow and quality of either of the, uh, the tissues that we're talking about, hair, nails, uh, teeth, and skin. So any disease process or nutritional problem uh, tends to reflect externally on the skin surface or some of these other tissues, just depending on the person and the nutritional uh, problem. What treatments are there, medical and nutritional, to treat psoriasis? Uh, psoriasis, first of all, is an inflammatory skin disease that involves uh, the immune system overreacting. And that would tend to cause what's known as T cells, which are types of immune cells that accumulate under the skin surface that are part of why there's inflammation on the skin. Uh, traditional treatments would include things like topical steroid creams, uh, and other immunosuppressive creams, and sometimes steroid creams and various types of immunosuppressives or drugs that reduce the immune response. Um, theoretically and clinically, these sorts of approaches do tend to work in the short term. For example, putting steroid creams on the skin, as most people with psoriasis or even eczema know, uh, will help in, in, in the short term, reduce some of the inflammation and itching and uncomfortableness of, of psoriasis, but you can't use steroids forever, and after several weeks or several months, they tend to just stop working. The same thing by taking them uh, by mouth at much higher doses. And these chemotherapy drugs uh, used to suppress the immune system increase one's risk of developing all sorts of diseases, uh, which are probably or often uh, worse than the actual psoriasis. Natural medicine, I think, offers a variety of, of far safer options. So when it comes to psoriasis, the first thing you want to check for is whether or not you're gluten intolerant. And if you are, removing gluten from your diet. Also, just changing your diet to a less inflammatory promoting diet. That means eating lower down on the, on the, food, on the food chain, less red meat and uh, poultry, and higher in omega-3 fatty acid containing foods like fish, and higher uh, healthy fat containing foods like avocados, for example, and, and different seeds and nuts of, of different types. And then there are different nutritional supplements that can help a psoriasis. Uh, one should base the supplement need on laboratory work, but some of them would include taking concentrates of omega-3 fatty acids, either from fish sources or maybe blue-green uh, algae uh, sources, which help heal the skin and reduce inflammation by calming down the immune response and also taking vitamin D orally, but also topical forms of vitamin D or vitamin A or even zinc directly on the psoriatic lesions can help. But the bottom line is it's a complex autoimmune disease that can be triggered by all sorts of things. But those uh, nutrients and food choices I mentioned, which I suppose I should also mention, of course, should include reducing all manner of refined and processed foods in the diet and eliminating or reducing sugar to a bare minimum to nothing at all because these types of foods are chronically inflammatory promoting in people who are obviously susceptible to inflammation uh, with psoriasis. What are some of the main causes of hair loss that stem from a person's diet? 
Do these causes differ between men and women? Dietary problems are an underappreciated uh, cause of hair loss. In fact, pretty much every day I'm contacted by both men and women, particularly women who are uh, really concerned about their hair loss. Uh, men tend to expect hair loss, but when women experience hair loss, particularly uh, in, in the front of the head, that could be extremely uh, um, uh, stressful and often represents an underlying health problem like a hypothyroid or low thyroid problem, but it could also just mean that their diets for years have been inadequate. Even if those two problems are the causes of hair loss in men and women, low thyroid function or just poor diet, even if you correct them right away, it could take several months before someone's hair loss stops and hair regrows, and that's just due to the, the life cycle of hair follicles. But there are many, many different causes of hair loss. In men, it's mostly genetic. In women, it can be, but it's much less likely genetic in women. It's more likely due to underlying hormonal problems, in my experience, which could include low thyroid function, but also problems with estrogen and progesterone, as well as testosterone balance. But it's important to realize that whether or not we're talking about hair loss or any other chronic health problem or acute health problem, that individual causes need to be sought and the diet and lifestyle needs to be adjusted for whatever those causes are. So, for example, I was contacted yesterday by a woman who wanted to know whether or not if she took the B vitamin, biotin, would that slow her hair loss because she had read all over the internet that it could. And yes, you'll find all sorts of articles on that but I can promise you it almost never works because that situation of an isolated biotin deficiency almost never exists. So these issues are usually a bit more complex. Careful laboratory work and careful questionnaires and health and nutrition history and overview usually figures out what the cause is. And if it is nutrition, hair loss is very readily responsive to improvements in nutrition. Are there any external or environmental factors that can cause skin, hair, nails, or teeth disorders? If so, how can they be re reduced or avoided? You know, problems with the quality or health of our hair, skin, and, and nails, and our teeth, for example, are many. Uh, we're exposed to electromagnetic forces. There are issues with uh, ozone depletion causing certain um, wavelengths of light that naturally would be filtered to you know, hit our body surfaces, which can cause uh, premature aging, everything from wrinkles to age spots uh, to affecting the body in, again, electromagnetic ways. So uh, there is very little that an individual uh, can do in terms of uh, uh, avoiding these things, unless, of course, they're activists and they're working at the grassroots level to, to help reduce these environmental insults. But assuming that they're they're there and we have to deal with them now. Improving one's general nutritional resilience against these potentially harmful environmental factors is the way to go. So thinking about fundamental uh, healthy diet and lifestyle, getting enough sleep, not drinking too much alcohol, not smoking, reducing or eliminating refined and processed carbohydrates and sugars from the diet, eating lots of fruits and vegetables, plenty of water, eating organically when possible. All these things are just examples of ways in which to improve the body's resiliency against the myriad of environmental factors that could uh, negatively impact our health. This has been Dr. Michael Wall.